Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fallout. This is where I watch every play of every game of every week, trying to find you the fantasy football nuggets nobody else knows about, the pearls of wisdom that only Underdog TV can bring you. Uh, we run our own analytics, um, slash I run my own analytics. Uh, my Fantasy Football Almac is built on a lot of this stuff. Uh, weekly, in and out, there's machine learning. It gets smarter and smarter as we go on in the season. I supplement that by watching every single game. So I'm not, I'm not just computing stats and having computer printouts. I watch as well. So you don't really typically get both of those things. Um, but I'm doing that. I'm putting in the time for you. So today I'm going to be talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the San Francisco 49ers, the week three matchup. Um, let me just start with uh, San Francisco. No, you know what? Take that back. Let me start with Pittsburgh. How do you blow this game? Um, it was like four turnovers in the first half. Uh, they had the ball on the doorstep in San Francisco. Credit that San Francisco defense that I've been talking up for the first two weeks. Uh, San Francisco somehow pulled off this game. They're a very good 3-0. They had no business winning this game. And uh, for me, the blame lies uh, solely on the coaching staff, specifically the offensive coaching staff in Pittsburgh. Let me just read you the stat line. You have Mason Rudolph in his first start. Now, he played pretty well last week against Seattle at home. In his first start, uh, 27 passing attempts, 14 completions, 174 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Okay, now let me lead, read you the running stats. James Conner, 13 carries, 43 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. 13 carries. Um, James Conner, five targets, four receptions. Dude, run the ball. Run the ball, okay? Ben Roethlisberger back there, five wide. Not my favorite thing in the world. I don't like the five wide um, formation as much as Pittsburgh does it. I understand it. I'm not going to criticize them. They're successful doing that when Ben Roethlisberger's in there. Going five wide with Mason Rudolph and putting all of that on his shoulders is madness, okay? Pittsburgh, there is no reason you should have lost this game. You know it if you're a Pittsburgh fan. You know it. I know it. Nobody likes Todd Haley, okay? But this team has gotten worse and worse offensively since Todd Haley's been fired. And I'm, I hate Todd Haley. He's a prick, okay? I, I know it. You know it. Everybody knows it. But this team is not good. They will, I can promise you, they will be making a change in their offensive staff at the end of the season. They gotta shake things up. They'll probably move with an in-house um, call, you know, something. They'll, they'll bring in a similar system, similar terminology. You know, when Ben Roethlisberger comes back from injury um, you know, next year, he's not gonna want to learn a whole new offensive system. It's not gonna happen. But this is this is the pits, guys. Uh, James Conner needs to be more involved. I know I've been talking up this San Francisco defense more and more. 3.3 yards per carry, not great. If you want to bring in somebody like a Snell, Benny Snell, who I like, he looks pretty good, or or Jalen Samuels, or anybody like that, that's fine. But you gotta run the ball more to help your young quarterback out. There's no reason they should have lost this game. It was pathetic in my opinion. Um, Smith Schuster, three catches, seven targets, 81 yards and a touchdown. You know, I think this is gonna be the trend until they can start being a little bit more honest. With Mason Rudolph, they need more of a 50-50 run to pass split, okay? Now I know people out there are watching say, oh, you know, you're not an NFL coach. Well, look, it doesn't take a genius, okay? I'm not an NFL savant or anything like that. I'm not a Sean McVay. I'm a Sean Ryan. But if, um, it's obvious, guys. Um, you know, short passing game, I thought Vance McDonald was gonna be utilized a little bit more to try to get um, Mason Rudolph comfortable. Two targets, um, you just gotta do better. It was a bad game plan, guys, it just was. That's just, it is, it is what it is. Um, Steelers fans, if you're out there and you disagree, please comment and let me know why. I'd be happy to, uh, to hear you out and kind of engage with you guys. But, um, you know, it's it, very, very disappointing, I think, if you're a Steelers fan um, or, uh, you know, have any of these Steelers on your, uh, your team in fantasy football. The one, I guess, uh, nugget here is if you don't, if you're in a deeper league, you need a wide receiver. Deontay Johnson is starting to look really, really good. Uh, six targets, um, three catches, 52 yards, and found the end zone this week. He's going to be on your waivers. Nobody's probably going to pick him up with a 52-yard and one touchdown game, but he's getting better and better and more integrated into this offense. We saw him kind of introduced a little bit last week, a little bit more this week. I think that will go forward. He's even looking a little bit better than um, than James Washington is to me, who I liked quite a bit in, uh, in training camp. 
and in the preseason. Dante Moncrief, I said it last week, he's a dumpster vomit, and he was he was inactive this week, um, and rightfully so. I mean, the ball just keeps bouncing off bouncing off his face. It's like the Miami. He, they should trade him to the Miami Dolphins. They should have put him in that Minka Fitzpatrick trade. He would he belongs there. Um, let's talk about San Francisco. Uh, another solid game running the ball, um, including Garoppolo's six scrambles. Uh, they had 40 carries, 168 yards, 4.2 yards per carry. Uh, Mostert, I still say, is the most talented running back on that roster without Tevin Coleman when he's still out. Uh, 12 carries, 79 yards, 6.6 .6 yards per carry for Mostert. Um, he also added in the passing game a couple of targets, um, I believe. Now, Wilson, Wilson Jr., continues to get the goal line carries while Tevin Coleman is out. He's somebody you need to pay attention to, especially in daily fantasy. I probably wouldn't start him in fantasy sports uh, like my regular fantasy team. Only eight carries. Well, actually, that's fine, but only 18 yards on those eight carries, but two touchdowns. He's the goal line guy. Um, Breida, he gets a nice yards per carry. He's the, kind of, he's the guy that kind of totes the rock until they get to the 20-yard line. He had 14 carries, 68 yards. Frustrating. It's like the old Barry Sanders thing. Barry Sanders gets you down to the two-yard line, and somebody else shoves it in. It's, it's annoying, but it is what it is, um, and it will continue to be that way. Um, Matt Breed in the passing game, only three uh, targets, two receptions. What I think is going to happen is when Tevin Coleman comes back, I still think Wilson's going to take that, um, that goal line type job. Uh, maybe Usyk will be a little bit more involved there as well as kind of that H-back that they like to play, who, by the way, he also had three catches for 50, uh, 51 yards, Usyk did. I don't think he's a daily fantasy guy or anything like that, but Wilson is the one that intrigues me in this offense along with Mostert, who I still think, even when Tevin Coleman's back, I still think he's the most explosive guy in that roster. I like him quite a bit, and I do think that he will be the full-time starter um, at some point in this uh, 49ers system. Passing game, Garoppolo really didn't have to throw for much. Um, 23 completions on 32 uh, attempts, two interceptions, which wasn't good. Um, part of that, you know, huge turnover in the first half that uh, Pittsburgh couldn't capitalize on. Uh, one touchdown, not a great game for Garoppolo, but San Francisco won and they're 3-0, so there you go. Uh, Dante Pettis found the end zone. I still think this is Debo Samuel's receiving core. I like him. He only had four targets and three catches, um, but he is the most physically imposing. And I like Jalen Hurd whenever he's integrated into this offense. Goodwin didn't really do a lot. Um, um, Kittle, only six catches on eight, uh, eight attempts. Um, that's a nice stat, but only 57 yards. He wasn't getting a ton. You know, credit Pittsburgh. I mean, their defense did pretty well. They just couldn't hold, um, hold the team off, and their offense let them down. So there you go. Looking forward, we'll see. I do expect James Conner at some point to be used more. I do expect Vance McDonald to be used more. If not, Pittsburgh is going to lose a lot more. Um, that's how it goes. But anyway, there, uh, I think, wraps up another episode. Uh, once again, just kind of sum up from a day fantasy and fantasy point of view. Deontay Johnson, I like him. Uh, Mostert, I continue to like him. He's probably snapped up in most of the leagues. Um, and Wilson is probably, this is the second game he's uh, had two touchdowns. He's the goal line back, daily fantasy, a budget play. You want to pay attention to somebody like that. So that takes us through the episode. If you could please help support our channel, we want to become a YouTube partner. How do we do that? We get more subscriptions, we get more watches. So you can scribe, uh, subscribe in either corner of the video, the red button or our logo, and then our in the top right corner of the playlists. Um, please watch some more of these videos. We do previews, we do analytics, uh, we go granular. I'm starting to introduce a lot more of the Underdog Podcast Network um, for more personalities and interviews and uh, you know athlete interviews and all that stuff. So we're adding a lot of cool stuff. Uh, get in with us in the, uh, in the ground floor and help us grow. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you in the next episode.